One way to get chicken for shredded chicken at a really good price is to get Costco chickens. It ends up as less than $2 a pound for delicious cooked chicken. Plus I can cook the, the bones down for a nice broth um, and use it for when we cook rice or other items. So I'm going to take it apart, take the skin off and put it in the bowl and then kind of shred it up. I'll just take all the skin, put it in the pot that I'm going to use for making broth to get that flavor. And then peel the chunks of chicken off. Make sure to look for any bone. So I'll be able to shred it afterwards. And if you do it while it's still warm, it seems to be easier. But you can always warm it up. So I'm going to get all the bones in there, cover it with water, and then simmer that for a bit to make some nice chicken broth. Because I'll kind of shred this up a little bit. And then put a pound in each pan or a half pound at each of the sides of for the half pounds or the half pans. Okay, I'm going to call that shredded chicken. So now uh, I'll put it in pans. Help me pan person. Okay, so now put it here. Okay, so I've got eight ounces on each side of the divider. I'm going to pack them down a little bit so that they won't be too tall on the tray and kind of make sure that the shape is about uh, half of the pan so that it will in there. Okay, so there's one pound of chicken ready for pre-freezing. So then I can again get eight ounces on each side. Okay, eight ounces on that side. Okay. Now, and then take, all right, and then kind of press that one down. All right, another one ready for pre-freeze. So just do that with each chicken until it's all done. So I've got all the bones and skin and juices, everything into here from the Costco chickens, covered it with water. I'll let that simmer for a short time. And I'll strain it all off and save that for either for cooking or I'll cook it down and freeze dry it. I'll probably use it in rice or uh, potatoes or pasta or something like that. Okay, so that'll take an hour or two. So let it simmer a bit. Continuing on the rotisserie chicken from Costco. We've got them frozen in the pans. Going to pop them out and put them in the Ziploc until it's their turn in the freezer. So I'm putting it on here, so this uh, corrugated plastic piece, so they don't thaw. And I've got the full pan ones and the half pan ones. Okay, I'm going to work quickly so they don't thaw out. And I'm going to lose little bits probably. Get the one pound ones in there. Now. See if we can get all these other half ones in there. Well, as long as it'll zip or shut, it's good enough because it's not staying in there long term. It's just until it's its its turn in the freeze dryer. So with that, that can wait in the freezer for its turn. So the freeze dryer is completely defrosted now after the chili. Uh, here's the water from the chili. About, I'm going to say seven eighths of a gallon. So pretty full, but not as full as the last couple. So that's done. It's defrosted. It's ready to pre-cool for the next batch. Next batch is shredded Costco rotisserie chicken. So we just simply bought four big, plump, juicy Costco rotisserie chickens, the best chickens you can get. And um, I just shredded all the meat off of them and mixed it together so we can use it as shredded chicken later. It works out to about $2 a pound that way. I cannot get 
cooked chicken anywhere else for anywhere close to that price. So it's my favorite chicken. That's a great price. Figured we'd freeze dry 10 pounds of it. So let's get it um, set and get it going. So get the baffle out, get the thermometer underneath, and get the little disc in place. This is just a disc I cut out of acrylic plastic uh, to fit this opening. And when I say to fit this opening, I mean specifically, this opening is not round on my machine. I don't know if it is on yours, but it's more than an eighth of an inch, three, four millimeters out of round. So that's why I have a little arrow at the top because it points to that screw so that I put it in the same way each time. Otherwise it'll have, well, it won't fit. Uh, but if you use a perfectly round one, like I did for my test one, it doesn't fit. Okay. So get that closed and get it set. I'm going to close the drain valve. Okay. And after this is running, we'll move over to the uh, bagging table. And as soon as it's cold enough, half hour to 45 minutes, we'll get the food on the trays. Well, now we're on to batch number 25 of this series, doing shredded Costco rotisserie chicken. It's a great way to get the chicken. The freeze dryer has been pre-cooling for about an hour and a half now, and it's really cold. It's like negative 18, negative 20. So it's time to, it's past time to get stuff on the trays and get them in there. The trays have been sitting in the freezer, so they're ridiculously cold already. I'm going to add parchment paper and then add the chicken. So this is the frozen chicken. Well, huh. in your world, you just saw this. So got rotisserie chicken. So there's one pound of chicken. And a half pound one. So it gives me two and a half pounds on a tray. All of this chicken came from just one Costco rotisserie chicken. And what a deal. So that this was $4.99 worth of chicken. Plus I got the bones and stuff to make a nice broth to cook the rice in or cook pasta in. Uh, yeah, it's a great deal. Tray two. There we go. Tray three. Okay, 18.59. And tray four. And as usual, we lost some weight just in the freezing process, because if you put warm things or even non-frozen things in a regular freezer, uh, you lose some of it in the freezer. It ends up condensing on the walls in the freezer. Okay, and on this one, I have more of the half blocks, 1869. So now we get thermometers in those and get them in the freeze dryer. All right. Those are ready to go in the freeze dryer. We'll get them moved over. They're ready to go in there. And it's ridiculously cold in there already. Yeah, so it's been pre-freezing for an hour, 50 minutes, and it's negative 28 already. So it's way past time to get them in there. We'll do it now. All right. Well, I'm going to have to open the drain valve and there it goes. And starting at the bottom. Tray four. And three. Tray two. Okay. 
and tray one. Now we'll get the front back in place and get that closed. Now, looking to make sure I got a seal all the way around there. And I do not. I'm missing over here and over here this time. Probably because it was compressed pretty well. So, I'm going to put my little pallet knife in there, give it a twist, and pull that seal forward just a fraction of an inch so I could make sure that I get the good ring around here. Because I'm not going to be up when this starts, and I want to be 100% sure that it's got a good seal. This lets me know that it's sealed, at least at this pressure. The rotisserie chicken from Costco is in the freeze dryer now. It'll be done in a couple of days. I mean, usually everything's done faster. Uh, freeze drying doesn't take as long as what it seems to on these videos. So generally, you know, 30 hours plus or minus. So you could do more in this same amount of time. And it's really not too much of a struggle. It takes an average of less than an hour a day. Costco rotisserie chicken is a great deal on a way to get some good amount of chicken at a good price. I can't find cooked chicken anywhere else for this price. This might be one of the best bargains for, for meats that I could get. All right, so it says it has about three hours left. Uh, the pressure is down real well. The temperatures are coming up nicely. And so everything would suggest that it's going to be done in about three hours, which would be a total of about 31 hours. It's not going to be done in 31 hours. First of all, that would be about three in the morning, and I'm not going to be doing that at three in the morning. I'm going to add additional time right now so that it won't be done at three in the morning. But the other reason is, is that it's not going to be dry yet. So I'm going to add uh, let's see, this would be for nine. I'm going to add three more hours. I might as well add four hours. So we'll go to seven hours. Because it's still going to be off when I wake up in the morning. I'll still have to add, uh, restart it to warm it up. But at least it won't be as much. And maybe it'll be about almost dry. And so only it'll only take a quick check. But... Now, let's go look at the thermometers. I don't know if we've got enough light in there. Thermometer in the food on the tray. Come on, you can focus on that, can't you? So it's below 30 degrees on that tray. That means it cannot be finished freeze drying. Because um, it's below freezing. That means it hasn't gotten warm enough to finish all of the moisture out of that tray. And what I mean by this is that the harvest right th temperature probe is showing about 120 degrees, but the thermometer inside the food is still showing below 30 degrees. It hasn't warmed it up enough to finish driving off all the moisture. I've never found one yet that has a temperature um, that's that low in the food and still be finished. Anyway, so I'm going to give it the extra time and see what happens. So it's been sitting and chilling for about four hours since it finished. I'm going to rewarm it so that it won't uh, condense moisture on the trays as soon as they open it because it's cold in there. So I'm going to just put more dry time and it never got opened and continue. Let's see what temperature it says. Yeah, it says it's negative 50 right now, and that's probably accurate looking at the, mom, at the thermometers inside. So we'll let that warm up for just a few minutes and then get them out and check them, put them back in for a dry check, and then be able to bag them. The chicken's been rewarming for about 40 minutes. It's all up above 80 degrees. We'll take them out, weigh them, put them back in for the dry check. So let's do it arrow past the last of it. Get the drain valve opened. So tray one. It's 1102. 
and I'm going to rotate them top to bottom so I'll leave that one out for a second do tray 4 it's 11 14 and then this one will go to the top and tray 1 will go to the bottom and then tray 2 11.07 kind of hesitated because it was bouncing 6 to 7 okay and then put that one up higher also switch those 1100 even all right and then this one will go to the next to the top and this one will come down one now they're back in there, one through four, from bottom to top now. Get the front disc back into place. Get it closed and restart. I'm just going to press more dry time. Check drain valve, yes. And continue. And it's plenty cool. Okay, I'll give it an extra 15. That way I can check it in two and still have it warm. Okay, we'll be back in about two hours. The oil recirculating pump's going to come on and I'll give it a little bit of a shake. Again, I try to do this a few times each batch, anytime I happen to walk by basically. So it's running and I just give it a jiggle and then there's a few little water blobs going through and that's all there is to it. It's two hours later, gonna take them out and check them now. If they didn't lose any weight, we'll take them out and get them bagged. So, down arrow past the last part of it. That way it's still nice and toasty warm. Open the drain valve. All right, so tray one. Okay, it looks like less than one gram. So I'll check the others. So tray two. So that's also one gram. And tray three. Okay. A fraction of a gram. gram. It's bouncing from 1099 to 1100. So it's less than one gram difference. Okay, so right now I'm looking at taking them out. So let's see what this last one is. Okay, make sure it's not touching and it's not. And it also is one. Okay, so in two full hours Let's see, 700, 250, uh, the tear weight. Okay, so each tray is less than one gram difference. Each tray has about 250 grams of product on it or food on it. Um, so that's less than a half of 1%. I'm gonna take them out. So I'm gonna stop it with no defrost and unplug the uh, timer motor for the oil pump uh, for the oil filtration pump all right so and get that in there and get the fan in there and i might clean it after this one it's been about 20 batches so it's probably time to get her done whoa okay so it's been i think 20 or 21 batches since i cleaned this last i think this time after it defrosts we might clean it before we restart it oh, let's get that defrosting so here's the power usage for the chicken 26.02 kilowatt hours i'm going to reset it so it'll be ready for the next batch all right so there's the chicken We'll get all the thermometers out and then get them weighed. So tray one, 
and we'll get all the thermometers out. Uh, 1091. Tray 2. Tray 3. And tray 4. Okay, so we've got the weights. We'll do the math, find out how much... Um, huh, do I even care? Yeah, I better do it because I might need to change the amount. Because I have some quart bags labeled. And I'll put how much water it needs after I find out how much I put in there. But I'm not sure that a whole pound is going to fit in one of these bags. Obviously a half pound will, but I'm not sure that a whole pound will. So I might have to go with three quarter pounds and half pounds. So I better weigh them to get an idea of how much should be per pound. So I'll be right back. Don't go away. The shredded rotisserie chicken from Costco is now dried. It was 10 pounds, now it's approximately three pounds. And I'm gonna see what it'll fit, how much will fit in a quart bag. I'm hoping to put a pound in a quart bag. So we'll get some in the bags and then figure out how much uh, will fit in the rest and then get the rest of the label on there. So we'll get them in the bag and then move them over to the bin, get the bin number five started. I'm going to start out with one of the half pound amounts because that should fit easily. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and label it as a half and then I'll be able to check, see how much. So a half pound, I'm going to label it as half pound and a half pound needs 157 grams of water. And to help keep those separate, All right, so I'm gonna kind of put it this way. So I'll kind of pull it apart a little bit so that it will go into the bag. Okay, so shaking it down, I can get uh, the half pound is easy. Five more of them for half pound because I already have those separate. So I'm going to start with that for half pound and see how that works out. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of all of the half pound ones first. So I'm sure three quarters of a pound will fit. So the big question is, would a whole pound fit? I could kind of stuff them in there. It's not like I gotta have to worry about it getting shredded. I mean, that's kind of the purpose of it. So I'm gonna try one of them and cramming the whole pound in there to see if it'll fit. This one, it looks like I shredded it more to begin with. So I'm gonna use it for my experiment one. So I'm gonna try to really shred this apart and then see if it'll fit in the bag because I can kind of cram them down. It won't hurt to pack them. That just doesn't look like that's going to fit. Oh, well, let's find out because I can always just stop at three quarters of a pound and label it that way since I didn't already label it. So I'm going to kind of pack them in there. Well, that fits. I'll do them because I really would like to have one pound bags. So now the rest of them are labeled. We've got the fact that it's batch number 525 for me or 25 of this series. And it's chicken shredded from Costco. I didn't write the rotisserie part because that's just too many words to write. Uh, the date that it went into the freeze dryer, that it was one pound and that it needs 315 grams of water to get it back to approximately the same moisture level. Now that number isn't necessarily important because this will pretty much soak up the amount that it needs. But if you're putting it in something, you'll probably want to use that amount of water or something a little less maybe to start with because it's easier to just add a little more if you need it. So we usually add a little less if we're not sure. So. I'm going to go ahead and use the second tray to move one of the blocks onto at a time so that I keep them separate. And then I can just shred them up, 
shred them apart on the tray and then I'm going to pack them in the bag. And again, it won't hurt if I shred them more because it's supposed to be shredded chicken. And I'll pack them in there. And hopefully it works out right. And I'm not bothering to weigh individual bags on, at this point because each block was one pound or a half pound for the other blocks. So I know that this was one pound. Now the water I'm estimating because I'm assuming that every block is approximately the same. And the fact that I mixed it up, they shouldn't be too far off. But each block probably technically needs a slightly different amount of water and I'm not accounting for that. And oh well, some of them are going to be maybe a slightly wet, some slightly dry. I'll just have to live with that. We'll get these stuffed in there and it did take quite a stuff. Now I'm going to pack them down a bit by uh, hitting them on the table. So I'll skip most of that because it's annoying sound. All right, that packs down pretty good and get the rest of it in there. All right, it's packed pretty good, but it does fit. All right, we have the chicken bag. We have seven one pound bags and six half pound bags. We're going to get 300 cc oxygen absorbers in them and get them heat sealed. Okay, so we get the first 10 and I'm going to try to tuck that down alongside so that I don't get it in the seal area. Okay, so I still need three more of those. If there's room at the top, I'm going to squish out any extra air. So on the half pound bags, there's space to squish out some. Now I have a part bag, has seven of them. I'll take three of them out and reseal it with the other four. All right, so I've resealed that with four of them left in there. Going to make sure that the seal area is nice and smooth. It's on the top edge, as close to the top as I can get it, so that I can have more chances. So the first bag, I like to do it twice to make sure that it's up to temperature real well. All right, a full seal across the top of that, edge to edge with room for a couple more tries down below that, or if you cut it off and want to reseal it because you're taking some out, there's still space. And as always, one last thing before they go in the bin, put the gross weight of each bag, 166 on that one. 166 grams on that one. Now if this bag fails and lets water in or moisture in and starts to get heavier, I'll know it without opening it. All right, so as soon as these are all labeled, we'll move over to the bin and get them in there. The shredded rotisserie Costco chicken is all bagged and oxygen absorbers and sealed and ready to put in the bin. We're starting on tub number five. And so the fifth set through here, there was still a little bit of room in four and we'll remember that in case we need it for future batches, uh, like the pasta that had the pretty big bags had to put some of it in a previous bin. This one or bin four, ah, here it is. Bin four will also have a little bit of room left in case we need to put some more in there later. Yeah, there's room. We could put the entire set of chicken in there, but I really like this having bins full of the six categories of food. And again, if you were doing this at home, you would probably choose different sets, but you could also make up your own categories. I didn't know what I wanted when I started. I just thought I need to start somewhere, so we'll just use the, the categories I chose. I wasn't even sure about using meals as a category at all until I was finished with 500 pounds 
of ingredient type foods that I could make thousands of recipes. If you had 50 batches, 50 different kinds of foods in there, I, I don't even know. I guess depending on how many ingredients you used in a meal for making up a recipe. So you could literally have millions of combinations. The bins and the types of things that you put in it would vary immensely. And maybe you just want to have a bin of meats and a bin of vegetables. That's a perfectly legitimate way to go. The important thing from what we've seen is have some kind of plan. We had zero or close to zero plan for the first 500 batches. So we went more than four and a half years with just randomly doing anything that sound interesting at the mo moment or what was on sale at the moment without any plan of where we were headed toward it. We knew we wanted to have a variety of things, but we had no goals for it. This series has been the best thing for our freeze drying since we started because we have a goal. Even if it's just a 50 batch goal, it's a goal that we've never had before. So try to make a goal of what you're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, I mean, with us, the original thought process was I wanted to buy a walk-in freezer because we already had three freezers and I was looking at buying another one because they get full when we make all these big batches of stuff. And I thought, well, that's crazy to have a walk-in freezer. They're very expensive to buy. Even a used one was very expensive. And then you have to have the constant energy supply to operate it. And then if the compressor goes out, you could lose everything. Um, so that's when we thought, well, with the freeze dry, yes, you put more energy into it initially, but then it's shelf stable. Don't care if the freezer goes out. And if it's pre-cooked, you don't even have to add energy. I mean, I mean, I get that one a lot too. People ask when I do rice or beans or things, why bother cooking them? They're already shelf stable. Well, that's absolutely true, but you need to put energy into them before you eat them. I have the energy right now. I may not have that energy later. So if I do the rice and cook it almost all the way, all it needs is a little bit more water time, soaking time with some hot water, then I can just pour in hot water. And even if you used cold water and give it a half hour, it's still gonna be edible. The same with beans, like for the chili. Yes, the bags of beans are storable but then you need to put a lot of energy into them before you can use them. This way, they're ready right now. We'll get these in the tub and move on. A nice empty tub waiting to be filled. So we'll get the bags in there and going to add them as a single layer on the bottom. Costco often has these tubs on sale. In fact, we just bought another 10 uh, of these tubs because we're going to run out before this series is done or just shortly after. So we've got another 10. Okay, so this is done. We'll move on to the next one. The chicken's all in bin five now. We're ready to move on to the next batch. Uh, going back down the list, it's vegetables again. This time we're doing chopped broccoli. And again, bagged chopped broccoli, pre-frozen, trying to do as many of the things that we can that are very quick and easy and take very little work. That's part of what getting started is about for me, is how can people get stuff into the freeze dryer without a lot of work? One of the things I should mention is that these on these videos, I'm doing a lot of things that I wouldn't normally do if I weren't doing it for video. I don't carefully weigh every piece of it because when I put them in the pans for pre-freezing, I've already weighed them. I already know that they're, usually I do 500 grams in a, in a pan, uh, not one pound, because uh, it's just easier for me to work with. So I already know that all of my pre-frozen blocks and cubes that I've put in, in the Ziplocs in the freezer were 500 grams. The little half ones were 250 grams. I know that before I start, so I don't bother weighing them. But on this series, I want to be as accurate as possible and get the data before and after. Because uh, normally I 
only weigh the th stuff afterwards if I know I'm going to want to put water back in it, like soups and things. Uh, meats I usually don't because I can just moisten it with enough to make it wet again, so I don't worry about it. Uh, some of the vegetables, I don't worry about it because they will absorb the amount of water necessary. So I usually don't do this much. Uh, so it's usually a lot faster. Pop them out of the bag onto the tray into the freeze dryer. I already know the weights and so I don't care about weighing the whole tray. Um, I also don't usually record the amount of time that it takes or the power usage. I've never recorded the power usage before. So actually this is interesting and enlightening for me. All of this has been great. I'm glad people had asked for this because I frankly wouldn't have done it. And I'm seeing uh, some interesting data with the weights and the time and the power usage. So thanks. But anyway, it would be a lot faster. Uh, so what seems to take a long time on the video does take a long time. But if you're doing it at home and you're not tracking all of these variables, it's a lot quicker than this. Usually I can load the trays and get them in the freeze dryer in just two or three minutes because I'm not weighing anything. I'm taking, I'm actually taking the, the empty freeze dry pans over to the freezer on the cart or taking them out of the freezer, putting them on the cart, popping the blocks in there and then going, put them in the freeze dryer. There's no steps in between. There's no weighing in between. Um, it's a lot faster. So that's it until it's defrosted and get ready for the next batch. Thanks for watching. The rotisserie chicken cost. Ha! Let's probably cut most of that out because yawn. Come give me a hand, please. Put the scale up here and. Uh, <laughs> I want a bigger hand. <laughs> it's <is> so great. <laughs> and turn it on first. <gasps> oh, it could go on there and then tear it out. It's the other, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we'll try. A pound of the shredded Costco chicken. Okay, now come and switch pans. More than two and a half pounds for a five dollar chicken. That's a great deal.